Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Nosa. I'm a medical doctor in the UK and I make videos on medicine and lifestyle. As you can probably tell from the title, today's video is going to be discussing the different UK doctor titles slash grades, what they all mean. Because I remember when I was in medical school, I just struggled to figure out what these different terms mean. So I'm here to break it down to you guys today. I'm also going to be going through the specialty training pathway simultaneously so you can better understand what those different titles mean. Before we go into the video guys, I just want to thank Skillshare for kindly sponsoring this video. By the way, I've got my iPad here today and my iPad pencil, so I'm going to be explaining the UK grade titles and also drawing the specialty training pathway on my iPad for you guys to see on my screen here. So please bear with me if you see me looking down once in a while. After five to six years of medical school, all doctors in the UK proceed to enter the UK Foundation Programme, which is two years in length. It is sort of like an internship programme where you rotate between different specialties every four months to experience a wide range of specialties to prepare you for specialty training in the future. First year is called FY1, which is Foundation Year 1, and the second year is called Foundation Year 2, which is also known as FY2. Now, it's at this point, at the end of FY2 here, that you decide to proceed to applying to specialty training. The title of your job as a doctor would depend on what specialty training you're going to. I just want to mention a common term that is used by doctors amongst themselves, but it's actually not officially recognized by the GMC here. So you know how I mentioned there was FY2 here? Sometimes you hear of doctors being referred to as F3 doctors, F4 doctors, F5 doctors. And basically, all this really means is that, that these doctors here have decided not to proceed into specialty training for whatever reason. Common reasons include, for example, um, let's say they wanted to have time off to travel or they hadn't decided what specialty training they want to go for. If, if it's their first year after foundation year two, where they've not gone into specialty training, they're called F3 doctors. If it's their second year where they've not gone into specialty training, they're called F4, F5. You meet some F7 doctors. Basically, I don't think those doctors plan to go into specialty training at all. And you can actually remain at that level. But just be aware that for the purposes of applying to specialty training in the future, even if you're an F5, F6, when you're applying, you're going to have to start from scratch. And you're going to be considered at the level of an F2 doctor, despite you probably having a bit more experience. So regarding specialty training, most doctors in specialty training would have the term ST. ST stands for specialty training, obviously. So anyone that is in their first year of specialty training would be referred to as ST1, ST2 when they progress to the second year, ST3 when they progress to the third year, and it goes on until ST8, which is considered, you know, the level of a consultant, really. To make this even more confusing for people, this structure sort of only applies to what we call run-through specialties. Examples of run-through specialties include peds, obs and gynae, ophthalmology, clinical radiology, and the list goes on really. There are quite a few of them. If you guys would like to see more about what exactly run-through specialties are, I'll link a video up here titled what happens after medical school an old video of mine where i go into more detail about what the run through specialties mean and what uncoupled training means as well but i'm not going to go into that for the purposes of this video on the other hand let's say you wanted to go into a medical specialty like cardiology rheumatology then you would need to do internal medicine training first so these doctors by the way this is still specialty training these doctors because it's internal medicine training we will be shortened that to imt so a doctor in their first year of IMT training would be referred to as IMT1, then IMT2 in the second year, and so on. IMT training is only three years, by the way. So, like I said, that's a doctor planning to go into some type of medical specialty in the future. When these doctors get to IMT3 level, they then apply for specialty training. So if they wanted to go into cardiology, like I said before, they would apply for ST3 cardiology or ST3 rheumatology or ST3 Dermatology, any higher specialty training they're interested in. There's no such thing as an ST1 cardiologist in terms of the training program. In terms of experience, an ST1 pediatric trainee should have the same level of experience as an IMT1. 
because they both just come off the foundation year two program technically if you are interested in surgery surgery is a similar concept you know um they start off with core surgical training before they go on to higher specialty um, training in surgery so for example if you wanted to be a plastic surgeon core surgical training which is two years and they're called cst1 and c cst2 it's at this point that they now apply to whatever um surgical specialty they're interested in so st3 plastic surgery by the way any any st3 trainee that has passed the relevant exam so the st3 here st3 here that have passed the relevant exams is considered a registrar a registrar is a senior doctor in the hospital just below the level of a consultant and they usually run the hospital especially on night shifts and on weekends and the consultants tend to liaise from home in most specialties i just want to mention an important point here st3s are considered registrars but not in the case of gp so gp trainees which i'm i'm one of i'm currently a gp st1 gp st1 as you know gp is three years so there's gp st2 gp st3 any gp trainee in st1 is considered a gp registrar now there's this term that goes around in the hospitals i find nurses tend to call you that or the healthcare assistants um, it's called senior house officer sho it's a very vague term which is why i believe they stopped using it but it's still very much used in the nhs and sho basically covers any doctor from F2 here down all the way to registrar level ST3 right so any doctor between um, foundation year 2 and um, ST3 which is when they become a registrar is called a senior house officer so as we were discussing before when you become an ST3 registrar you follow the relevant pathway like I said and become a consultant a consultant is the most senior role in the hospital as far as doctors. They usually have a, a team of people looking up to them to lead and every, every patient coming to hospital would have a named consultant. Another common term you find used is junior doctor. A junior doctor basically covers any doctor below the consultant level. So every, everybody here all the way back, you know, you know what I mean. Then we've got the locum doctors. A locum doctor is a fully qualified doctor temporarily covering a position for another doctor, for example, maybe because the, the hospital is short staffed or the GP practice is short staffed um, or someone's on maternity leave. They come for a short period of time and cover certain positions. They tend to be paid higher as well because it's sort of like contracting. So you can have a locum doctor at any of these levels except the F1 level. Then we also have the locum, the LAT LAT. Those are, that stands for locum appointment for training. These are usually 12 month posts that a locum has been hired to fulfill the post. So an example of a locum appointed training would be like F2 standalone. So let's say somebody went to maternity leave, like I said, or someone's off sick for a year, they would usually recruit someone to that post to fulfill the role of that person that was meant to be off. By the way, these roles tend to be training jobs, which is quite unusual for locum jobs because locum jobs tend to be non-training roles. Now we're on to another term called trust grade doctors. These doctors, um, they are like similar to locum doctors in the sense that like they're not in a training job. They're usually hired to fulfill someone being off or on short staffing or anything like that. So they're not in a formal training pathway. They're usually short term contracts as well, but they tend to be longer than what we would typically refer to as locum doctors can be a trust grade doctor at any level um, besides the F1 level really. So you have the F2 trust grade doctor, so you have an um, ST1 trust grade doctor, you can have this IMT trust grade doctor. What level of trust grade doctor would depend on your current level of experience. Now we have another term called RMO which stands for resident medical officer. This term is usually used by private hospitals um, to cover any doctor really below the consultant level. Another common term is clinical fellow 
these doctors um, are usually around the ST, ST3 level although this can vary and it can be higher up and they usually have a certain amount of clinical responsibilities usually less than the average doctor on the ward because they're expected to also do quite a bit of research as well quick interruption guys i just want to mention regarding skillshare i've been going about skillshare for a while now because i really really recommend skillshare because there are loads of classes on there and there's so many skills you can learn from skillshare as well i've been doing this thing where i've been recommending a different class in each of my videos and i just want to recommend a class today by another black creator called productivity with evernote use one tool for everything her name is lindsay c holmes i recently started using evernote with the help of skillshare because i love the fact that so many apps integrate into this one place where you don't have to go and keep searching for different things in different places everything is in one place and that way i'm more productive that way i'm more efficient so if you guys would like to see more about you know using evernote getting into using evernote please go and check out this class and the best part about this is i've got a free trial for you guys in my um, description box down below the first 1000 people that use my link below will get a free trial of skillshare and thereafter it's only 10 dollars a month so please guys go and check it out there's no harm and i really think you're going to enjoy it I hope you guys found this video helpful and I covered most of the terms you guys have heard about. If there's anything you'd like me to explain further, if there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll gladly answer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!